Okay, so we're just starting chapter nine. Chapter nine is all about differential equations. And specifically, a differential equation is exactly what it says, a differential or a derivative exists in the equation somewhere. So we could have a very simple differential equation like dy over dx equals x. To solve that differential equation, meaning to solve this thing for y, you would take the antiderivative on both sides. The antiderivative of dy over dx is y. The antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared plus c. And that would be the solution to that differential equation. So this right here would be the differential equation. And this right here would be the solution to the differential equation. Okay, they're not usually going to be quite that simple, but that is a differential equation. What we're going to talk about here in section 9.1, and this is a reason why you don't have um, like notes on this, because this is relatively something that I have just started doing um, in the not too distant past. Um, we're going to talk about verifying for the most part or using verifications of differential equations. What does that mean? Well, our first example says show that y equals two-thirds e to the x plus e to the negative 2x is a solution to y prime, not equals, I should say plus, two y equals two e to the x. So we want to show that this equation is a solution to the differential equation that's given below. And the differential equation is the y prime plus 2y equals 2e to the x. So if I just want to show that that is a solution, that just means that if I were to plug this in, this thing right here, if I was to plug all of this in for y, it should satisfy the solution. But I need to do more than that because I also have a y prime in my equation. So that means I need to find y prime in order to plug it in, which means I need to take the derivative. So the derivative of y here, 2 thirds e to the x, the derivative is still 2 thirds e to the x, and the derivative of e to the negative 2x is going to be minus 2 e to the negative 2x. Okay, I did use the exponential rule for derivatives there, I just took a shortcut. You would rewrite it, that's the e to the negative 2x times natural log of e, that's 1, times the derivative of the exponent, that's the negative 2, that's where that negative 2 out in the front comes from. Okay, so there is our y prime, so now I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug it in for y prime, so we're going to get 2 thirds e to the x minus 2 e to the negative 2x, that's the y prime part, plus 2 times y, y was the original equation given, that's 2 thirds e to the x plus e to the negative 2x, and that's supposed to equal 2e to the x. So now we have to do is simplify it and show that this actually works out, and hopefully it does. So let's see here, I've got 2 thirds e to the x minus 2 e to the negative 2x. Now I have to distribute the 2 on the left over here. So it's going to be plus 4 thirds e to the 2x plus 2 e to the negative 2x equals 2 e to the x. So what I can see is that I've got a negative 2 e to the 2x, negative 2x, and a positive, whoops, and a positive. 2e to the negative 2x. Those two things are going to cancel out. Then I've got 2 thirds e to the x and 4 thirds e to the x. If I add those together, I get 6 thirds e to the x, which is indeed 2e to the x. 
So we have shown that y equals that equation up there satisfies or is a solution to the differential equation that was given. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it a different way. So let's let y equals e to the rx. Okay, and in this problem, we're going to actually be told that this satisfies the differential equation. Two y double prime plus y prime minus y equals zero. So we are being told that that does satisfy it. Our job is to find the value of r. All right, so r must be a constant because we're trying to find the value. So, in order to find the value, we're going to have to do a little bit of work because my differential equation has a y double prime and it has a y prime in it. So, we're going to need both of those. So, y prime. Okay, once again, this is an exponential derivative. So, let's rewrite it e to the rx times the natural log of the base, which is natural log of e. That's 1 times the derivative of the exponent. Remember, r is some constant. So, the derivative of rx is just r. So, that is my y prime. I then need y double prime. That's in my equation. So that's just going to be the derivative of r e to the rx. Again, remember r is a constant. It's a coefficient. So it's not like a product rule here. r is a constant. So again, it's going to be rewrite it times the ln of e, which is 1, times the derivative of the exponent, which again is r. So that's going to get multiplied out front, which is really just going to give us an r squared because the r times the r. All right, so now we're going to plug this stuff in. So we've got 2 times y double prime plus y prime minus the original y equals 0. We want to find the value of r. It looks to me like we can factor an e to the rx out of everything, which is going to leave r squared plus r minus 1. <clears throat> okay, an exponential can never equal 0, so it really doesn't matter what the value of r is in this piece right here. That will not ever equal 0, so that's kind of irrelevant. So it's really just this r squared plus r minus 1 that's going to, oh, that's not r squared. It should be 2r squared. I lost the 2. Otherwise, this is going to be very difficult. Okay, so it's really just this, which is going to equal 0. So our value of r, let's see, we're going to have to factor. And that's going to have to be plus. That's going to have to be minus. So r is either going to equal 1 half or r is going to equal negative 1. So we actually have two values of r that make this um, statement true that the y value above satisfies the differential equation. Okay, one more example. And again, this is just a supplemental exercise because similar problems to these have been showing up recently on AP exams. So our third example is, let's see, we're gonna have y equals cosine of kt or again, k is some constant, we're going to be given that 4y double prime equals negative 25y. <coughs> um, find the values of k. So again, we're trying to find the values of k that make this true. 
Okay, so it looks like we've got to do the same general idea here. I'm going to need the second derivative because that's in our differential equation right here. I've already got y because they gave that to me, so let's go ahead and find the second derivative. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of kt times the derivative of the inside, which is k. y double prime, the derivative of negative sine is going to be negative cosine kt times another k, so that's going to give me a k squared. <clears throat> yeah, I think that looks right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug this stuff in. So we're going to get 4 times y double prime equals negative 25 times the original y. And now we have to try and solve that thing for k. So I think we're going to have to move both of these two things to one side or the other. So let's go ahead and move. I don't think it makes any difference here. Um, let's move the the four part to the uh, to the right side. So that's going to be technically a negative four k squared. So we're going to have to add it to the right. So we get four k squared cosine of k t minus twenty five cosine of kt and you might have thought to ask yourself well why didn't I just divide both sides by cosine of kt you could do that but you're again if you do that you're potentially losing values of k because you're dividing one of the terms that has k out so we don't want to do that we want to move everything to one side and then we're going to do a little bit of factoring here so it looks like we can factor out a cosine of kt And then 4k squared minus 25 is a difference of squares, so that factors as well. That's going to be 4k minus 5, 4k plus 5, and then I've still got cosine of kt. So now we're going to go ahead and solve these things. So it looks like I'm going to get that k is going to equal 5 fourths k is going to equal negative 5 fourths and for the cosine part so it's got to be where cosine of kt equals zero so i'm going to try and figure out what angles of cosine are going to give me zero that's all of the pi halves so really kt is going to equal pi halves three pi halves five pi it's all the odd pi halves i should say so it's going to be plus um, I guess that would be plus 2 pi times n, if we're trying to find all of them, I guess. I think that sounds right. So then that means, if I want to solve for k, I'm going to have to divide everything by t, so that's going to be pi over 2t plus 2 pi over t times n. Yeah, I think that's right. So these are all of our values. And obviously, um, if they only limited us to within like a one circle or something, then we wouldn't have had to have added that 2 pi n part, but we did in this case. All right, that is all there is for 9.1. Again, this is a supplemental video. It's not something that you're going to see. There will not be any kind of web assign associated with 9.1. Um, but it is something that has shown up on the AP test, so I'm putting this one out there um, just so you have somewhat of an idea what it means to verify or to um, have something which is a solution to a differential equation. The rest of the sections that we do in this are actually going to be about solving for the actual differential equation.